A recent sub-zero weather event that most of us had never experienced here in Texas before had quite an impact on wildlife and many plants. Thankfully, the snow insulated plants that were below or low to the ground. As you can see here, parts of these tulips that were above snow level are damaged, but everything else seems to be fine. Many plants that typically survive our harshest winter days are badly damaged. Others will likely be fine over time, but they could take weeks to recover, and some may never recover. Annual late winter flowering plants were in bloom before the storm, and when the storm came, the plants froze and the flowers died instantly. This is what these camellia shrubs are supposed to look like this time of the year when they are healthy. I took this photo years ago when I started photography with a DSLR. And this is what they look like right now after the extended deep freeze. I have to say, it was quite strange seeing the plants in this condition. I just could not relate or connect to the subject like I usually do. On this day it was cool, overcast and gloomy, so my approach with photography was to keep the exposure on the darker side, capturing images of this plant with mysterious and moody feel. When it came time to edit, I felt drawn to experimenting with the mood even further and changing things in a way that I had never done before. Typically when I edit, I like to change the scene very little. I like to portray natural subjects as close to their true colors and values as possible. But this time, I felt like these images deserved a bit of creative play. I will show you some general ideas, not necessarily as a tutorial, but showing possible basic workflows that you can experiment with to color grade images in a moody style. There are a myriad of different ways you can do this. So my procedures here are basic studies from one location in one kind of lighting condition, as you see in the video footage from this day. Obviously, you would tailor your edits to whatever lighting condition and subjects you photograph on any given day. These two images are very similar. They have a slightly different exposure and one is a bit closer up. At first I made some slight changes as I'm not yet comfortable with pushing a mood in a very unfamiliar direction. Using Camera Raw, I lower the exposure and then while looking at the image I just try to decide what to change in order to make it more moody. You can see that the darks are already clipped as I intentionally underexposed the image when I took the photo, so I don't want to push the blacks even darker. I played with the hue, saturation and luminance sliders, pushing each to see what the changes looked like, deciding on the tones and hues that I liked. then bumped up the saturation a little more. Toggling the layer on and off, we can see what the adjustments look like. Back into Camera Raw, I tried out the Dehaze tool. It's one way to add some haze and lower the contrast in the image and then I experimented with some color adjustments and color grading.
Once again, I check to see the changes by toggling the layer on and off. Now I'm adding a custom vignette. And lastly, a curves layer to lift the mid-tones a bit. And I use a mask so that the lighter tones only affect the flower. There are so many different ways you can do this. For the second image, I try a different approach. I bring up a levels layer and play with the sliders to change the tones. I'm still not pushing the changes too far and try to build off the colours that are already in the image. I noticed that the levels changed the values and darkened the darks too much, so I modified the layer blend mode to color so the changes would only affect the colors and not the values. Next I attempt to further change some colors with selective color. The changes I ended up making are hardly noticeable. This is one way you can produce a slight matte finish, almost like an old film look. And again, I use a mask, this time to reduce the matte look on the flower and let the flower have more contrast.
It's still not feeling quite moody enough, so I selectively darken areas around the flower. It still has the matte feel, but I didn't really like the lighter tones. For this next one, I started by adding light, coming through the top left with a radial gradient. It's been a long time since I tried this feature, changing the shadows and highlights. Again, I cannot commit to a very big change. I'm once again playing with settings to see how things change and to see if I can accomplish the mood I'm going for. I add a mask here and just let the effect show up around the flower as if the light brightened that area a bit. Now I just want to show you another way that you can change the colours and tone for a moody look. I like the instant change of auto-tone. And you can try these others as well. It all depends on what your image looks like and the look you are going for. I move the opacity slider down a bit so that the change is not too drastic. And here is yet another way you can change the colour and tone, by using a gradient map. You can play with the blend modes and test different tints and effects. Switch between them until you are happy with the changes. One more way to make these moody colour grades is by trying out colour lookup. Test a few of the LUTs. These are lookup tables that change the colours and values.
And again, I toggle the layers of changes on and off to see what the changes look like. I left this image open for a while and after coming back to it I decided it would look better with a custom vignette. For just a moment I thought I would see what it looked like if I lightened it, but ultimately felt like the darker look was better. For this one, I thought about going cooler towards blue instead of the original warm tones. I will just let this one play as the edit goes on, as I was experimenting and trying different things. I didn't realize when I hit record as I was editing that the image is displayed a bit smaller on the screen. Hopefully you can still see it well enough. These were fun to do but there was not much room for colour variations as they were already all so similar in mood and tone to begin with. You still need to consider at the time you are taking your photograph what kind of look you are going for and a bad photograph cannot be fixed with a good edit. This is standard for photography across the board of course but it rings true in this case as well. I do wish I had slowed down a bit and considered the backgrounds more when I was taking these photos. In the future I'd like to try this again with a variety of images and lighting scenarios. I think it would work best with images where the subject is more isolated from the background.
There's one more image from this day that I edited and recorded for channel members using curves and level adjustments. If you are a supporting member, you can find the link on a members only post on the community tab for this channel. I hope you have enjoyed a very different kind of photography and edits from my usual images. I do hope this kind of weather event does not happen again for us anytime soon. I rather enjoy the predictable summers and winters we usually have here. And I hope to make a special point of taking photos of these camellia bushes when they are once again in full bloom. Take care everyone and enjoy the current change in seasons. See you next time.